What's up everyone, Patrick here. And today we're going to be doing a little walkthrough of the polyrhythmic crazy machine that is the Behringer Spice. Now we've just launched the product. So if you haven't seen the promo video, make sure to check that out, it's on the channel. But as it's such a quirky little synthesizer and we haven't really covered the functionality in those promos, I thought I'd do a quick walkthrough of how the synth actually works. Okay, so let's go through it. So starting off up here, we've got the VCO section. And the VCO consists essentially of three oscillators. So you've got your main oscillator and you also have three sub oscillators. So both VCOs are identical. So I'm just gonna focus on VCO one and that also applies obviously to VCO two. So we've got three frequency controls here. We've got the frequency for the main VCO and for the sub one and for the sub two. Then you've got your three level controls here. So VCO one, sub one, sub two. So let's put up VCO one and let's have a listen. So at the moment it's freely tunable here. So that was a square wave. You've also got a saw wave down here. If I flick that switch down. Now it definitely goes up to dog hearing territory there because the VCO is kind of inherently at a higher pitch because you have your sub oscillators. So I'm just gonna put that back to square wave for now. And of course, as I said, it's freely tunable, but you do have quantize functions that will snap the pitch to a scale. So that's your quantize function. And I know I'm jumping ahead a bit because that is in the sequencer section, but as we're sort of pitching it, I thought I'd cover it. And that's basically a different scaling modes, you know, pitch quantizing. So there's a JI, that stands for just intonation. You've got an eight step diatonic mode. You've also got a 12 step chromatic mode for that. Then you've got equal temperament with again, eight step diatonic and 12 step chromatic but we'll leave those off for now, we'll stick with free tuning. So as I said, the VCO is basically a higher pitch. And the reason that is, is because you've got your sub oscillators here. So let's stick in sub oscillator one here. Now, when I turn this up, you'll notice it's in unison with VCO one that's playing. So you get a unison mode there and the pitch tracks with the frequency of VCO1. But as I start to bring down this uh, sub one frequency dial here, you'll notice that it'll start dividing the pitch by integers of one to 16, one being unison mode and then so on. So let's hear that. And those are your sub harmonics. And playing with this, you can get very fat tones and chords out of just a single oscillator. So let's bring in sub three now. Okay, and the last thing I want to cover on this oscillator, uh, it's the shape we didn't go to, it's the middle switch on here. And that is pulse width modulation. But what it does is bring in PWM for the VCO1 only, not the sub oscillators. So the sub oscillators stay as a saw wave and the VCO1 becomes a pulse, which you can modulate. Now, in its normal state, uh, how it modulates is basically from the sub one's frequency. So if I bring down the subs here, so we're just hearing the VCO. We can hear it's modulated, but as I bring down sub frequency one, you'll hear the modulation changes. So obviously you can get some very interesting tones using that. Thank you. 
And obviously the same applies for VCO2 as well. And if you wanna modulate the PWM with an external LFO, that is also super easy. You just plug it into VCO1 PWM up here or VCO2, wherever it is, there it is. Okay, so moving on, you've got your filter here, the ladder filter. And you've got your VCA up here with a volume control, master volume control, and your envelope here for the filter. So let's have a little play with that. Okay, so pretty standard stuff there. So moving on to the sequencer section right down here. So you've got the transport section here, self-explanatory, you've got a play. You've got a trigger button. You've got a reset to reset the sequence. You've got a next button to go through the sequence, which is obviously useful for tuning up. So when you wanna... You want to get the perfect note that's very useful and then you've got an eg button here so that will turn off the envelopes and turn them back on again and if you press and hold it it'll leave the envelopes fully wide open which again is super useful for tuning because it works when the sequence is stopped as well and then to take that off, you just press and hold. Then over here, we've got the sequence octave section, and this will change the octave response of the four step sequences. So in position one, you basically get one octave above and one octave below. Which step are we on? Let's go to this one. So one octave above one octave below, then with two, it's two octaves. And then five, you guessed it, it's five octaves. So you can basically dial in the precision you want out of the analog four step dual sequences here. Uh, and talking of those, so, so you've got four controls here for sequence one. It's just your standard analog sequencer, so you can uh, pitch the notes, obviously. And sequence one applies to VCO1. Sequence two applies to VCO2. And to assign the oscillators you want to go to these sequences, you just do it here. So we can have none. So you can have any combination you want sent to the sequences. And then the last part of the sequences section, and it's definitely the most crazy part of it, is the polyrhythms. So there's four polyrhythm generators here. And the way it works is they are basically uh, divisions of the main tempo, again, with integers of one to 16. So uh, the way it works is you basically assign them to the sequence here. So none are assigned here, so there's no rhythm going in, but if I assign sequence one, It's 
basically its own rhythm generator. And you'll notice that sequence two wasn't moving because I haven't assigned anything to sequence two. Um, and these four controls here obviously equate to these four. So you've got, let's say, rhythm generator one here, and that's how you assign it to sequence one or sequence two here. Rhythm two, rhythm three, you get the point. So, and playing with these rhythm generators, I mean, you can get just crazy rhythms that you would just never think of coming up with on your standard format of synthesizer. When you start adding reverbs and delays to sort of fill the space in between the notes, I mean, it's great for evolving drones and evolving patterns, just for coming up with random melodies and uh, rhythms that yeah, you wouldn't necessarily think of doing yourself. semi-modular patch bay up here where you can do a whole bunch of creative stuff but we'll save that for a new video this was just the overview of the feature set the very quirky and very fun Behringer Spice all right guys remember keep the creativity flowing keep the beats alive and we'll catch you one.